viewers, now the Lingayats and Vokaligas are the two prominent communities that have dominated Karnataka politics for decades. 16 of the 23 chief ministers till now have been from the Lingayat and Vokaliga communities. A testament to the dominance of the two communities in state politics, at least in Karnataka. Now a fresh controversy has erupted in the political circles over an NDA delegation visit to a prominent mutt led by H.T. Kumar Swami and various other leaders, including R. Ashok, the leader of the opposition. Now, Nirmalanda Nata Swami is the head of the Adi Chunchanagiri Mutt, which is revered by the Vakaliga community, to which both current Deputy Chief Minister D.K. Shivkumar and Kumar Swami, of course, belong to. D.K. Shivkumar, in a blistering attack now, has said that he hoped that the seer asked the BJP leaders that why did they topple the Congress JDS coalition government led by a Vakaliga? Shiv Kumar pointed out that he too is from the community and is serving the state congress as a, the president and also the deputy chief minister in the state. Now, countering BJP's claim of being the representatives of the all-powerful community, he has now hit out as to what the BJP has done for the community. Congress, meanwhile, has said that they have given tickets to eight Vakaligas in this Lok Sabha polls, including two from the Reddy community as well. So, Let's firstly listen in to some of the political reactions that came in over this issue through the course of the day. ಶಕ್ತಿ <laughs> ಇಲ್ಲೇನು ರಾಜಕೀಯ ಏನಿಲ್ವಲ್ಲ ನಾವು ಇವತ್ತು ಮನೆಯ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ನಮ್ಮ ಒಂದು ಸಮಾಜದಲ್ಲಿ ಯುಗಾದಿ ಹಬ್ಬದ ಮಾರನೇ ದಿನ ಪ್ರತಿ ಹಳ್ಳಿ ಹಳ್ಳಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರತಿ ಮನೆ ಮನೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಇವತ್ತು ವಸ್ತುಡಕ್ಕು ಮಾಡ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥದ್ದು ಹಲವಾರು ವರ್ಷಗಳಿಂದ ನಡ್ಕೊಂಬಂದಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥದ್ದು ಇಲ್ಲೇನು ಬಾವುಟ ಹಾಕೊಂಡು ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಬಿಲ್ ಹಂಚ್ಕೊಂಡು ಇಲ್ಲ ಡಿ ಕೆ ಶಿವಕುಮಾರ್ ಅವ್ರ ಥರ ಫ್ರಿಡ್ಜ್ ಕೊಡೋದು ಟಿ ವಿ ಕೊಡೋದು ಸೀರೆ ಕೊಡೋದು ಕುಕ್ಕರ್ ಕೂಡ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದೀವ ಯಾವುದು ಇಲ್ಲ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಗೆಟ್ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಸೇರ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇವೆ ಓರ್ ಚುಡಕ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ದ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜೀಸ್ ವಿಸಿಟ್ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಡೇ ಆಫ್ ದ ನ್ಯೂ ಇಯರ್ ಟುಡೇ ಆಲ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಡಿಡೇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಎನ್ ಡಿ ಎ ಅಲಯನ್ಸ್ ಟುಕ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸ್ಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆದಿ ಚುಂಚನಗಿರಿ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ the coming 15 days is a very crucial period for our campaign i'm very confident that bjp and nda alliance will win on all 28 seats in karnataka and uh, in the rest of the south of india as well let me open this up gs prashant of the bjp is with us today we also have bhavya narsimha murthy from the congress party vijay grova senior journalist joining us today let's try and uh, you know decipher what the exact issue here is bhavya your uh, party president today said that the bjp is going meeting this year after some of the congress leaders did go there is the, is this some sort of a competition because when you heard mr surya he says well it is just a norm in karnataka to meet uh, you know seers of various communities so How, are you looking at it through the lens of trying to tap into the Vokaliga votes and that's the reason this delegation is gone or is it, like Mr. Surya says, just a formality? Deepak, um, as we all know, Vokaligas are a very progressive and smart community and they are a farming community, basically. Vokaliga means farmers. So we are a farming community and we all know what the NDA government, how they behaved with the farmers and the anti-farm laws and the way they uh, betrayed farmers regarding the msp and all of this right so now um, recently all the candidates and including our chief minister and the deputy chief minister everybody visited um, the dr nirmala and the swamaha swami ji 
and uh, took his blessings and uh, nda somewhere maybe you know they know that the wakaligas will not be voting for them owing to their anti farm um, you know bills and laws and the way they treated the farmers uh, maybe that's why they just wanted to put up a show and they went to the seer of course as someone uh, sitting in a religious as a religious head he is he will bless everyone there but of course uh, okaliga as a community supports congress because people there are more secular more accepting even the same matha that we are speaking about the seer who is sitting there it has more than uh, 60% from every community every other community uh, kids uh, the students belonging to poor uh, underprivileged background they go there and study for free they live there you know in various parts of karnataka in the matha and the educational institution so it's a more secular uh community it's a more um, inclusive community and something which is progressive so they all know even last time majority of okaligas voted for congress whether it was old mysore region mandya region we all know mandya uh, we just swept mandya and uh, uh they all voted for congress and because of which we are in power today right so somewhere the bjp knows that even this time during the parliamentary election okaligas are going to consolidate the vote and they they will all vote for the congress and that's the reason that they're just gone there to put up a show okay just a show prashant not doing deepak, enough for the okaligas is the claim by the congress see deepak firstly congress is in the habit of dividing people by caste and religion this is the congress dna you've seen it for ages now what congress does with people be that as it may the congress dna will not talk about it the frustration of our deputy chief minister dk shiv kumar is how a okaliga like dk shiv kumar was not allowed to become the cm despite congress getting 135 seats when he was the kpcc president he is venting his frustration against sidramaiya it is a Wheeled threat to Sidramaya saying, "Look, you are not doing justice to Okaligas. It is not a message for BJP because people know, and BJP and JDS as the NDA now we know what we have done for Okaligas and how Okaligas would back the BJP and JDS uh, alliance now. Congress now has got into this position wherein they have realized that the Okaligas also are not voting for them because they never voted for them in the previous Lok Sabha elections as well." because congress got one seat out of 28 and and mandya congress did not probably congress came third in the lok sabha elections last time so therefore we know where congress stands so therefore this is a ploy by dk shukumar as a wild threat to sidramaiya to say look i am going to bring down the government if you don't make me the cm this is a internal squabble of the congress on one side and on the other they are wanting to divide people by caste which they have done for decades together and there is nothing more to it because when kumar somi and ashok both have clarified that on the first day of the new year we have gone there to take his blessings what is there for shiv kumar to criticize just because shiv kumar and sidramaiya met this year a couple of days ago does not mean that the nda leader should not meet this year and moreover the seer is not limited to dk shukumar or dk shukumar cannot command over the seer saying who uh, the seer should meet therefore it is a i repeat it's a wild threat to sidramaiya saying look make me the cm or else i'm going to bring the government down okay that but is also mr game plan okay. and nothing okay. more okay you that's what you're deriving from what mr dk shukumar said but you'll also have to answer what he said as well as a direct charge he said that the bjp the cr prop shop probably asked the bjp why did they bring down a sitting okaliga chief minister the sitting okaliga chief minister himself has clarified as to why he had to step down when they were in alliance with congress and how congress humiliated him so therefore that topic is best reserved for kumar somi and dk shukumar to battle it out and kumar somi has time and again told how congress humiliated him when he was made the chief minister so therefore we did not reply to all that shiv kumar says but we have to look at his intention his intention is a threat to sidramaiya to say make me the cm or else i'll bring the government down okay mr grower i want you to come in as well the two politicians here are uh, you know trying to take 
out their own narratives out of the statement that has come in. Uh, but nonetheless, when you look at the dominance of the community in the political circles and the importance, we of course uh, do see uh, you know politicians make a beeline uh, to various muts, especially ahead of elections. How do you really look at this Wakaliga Tagawa that's happening between the Congress and the BJP and who stands to gain and who stands to lose? Well, see, Deepak, one thing very clear over here is, you know, both the parties here, both the spokespersons here, definitely are trying to woo the Wakaliga vote. And, you know, trying to blame the other one and saying that they have done more for the community. Uh, as, you know, would be uh, or, you know, maybe, we'll see that four or five days later, uh, either a Congress delegation or a BJP delegation will go to Lingayat Mats. Then again, they will have the same uh, narratives to play out over there. Now, it's a very unfortunate thing that, you know, a visit to a mutt to as to seek blessings, what was told earlier, is being given such political twists. And this is something which is very unfortunate that, you know, the real issues that need to be discussed somewhere are getting lost. We all know the dominance of the Vokaligas and the Ligayats in the Karnataka politics, and that's something which uh, is not being shaken and uh, has not been shaken for quite some time. Now, clearly, this is something where, you know, when the Congress, which talks of, you know, uh, more uh, inclusive growth, including the minorities, the uh, BJP with its outreach for the Dalits and the OBCs and all that. This is where we find that, you know, once again, we find the major communities taking, you know, pot shots at each other uh, is very unfortunate in the political battle. Now, a visit to a mutt certainly did not need the kind of, you know, uh, bringing the political battle into this entire thing. But it's rather unfortunate that we are seeing such a scenario emerge today where both these leaders or the leaders of both the sides are pointing fingers at each other. Now, we also know that these two communities have not, you know, uh, only uh, stopped the caste census in the past. We see that the objections came from, you know, these uh, communities, which are politically very strong. But the people of the state, a developed state like Karnataka, I can understand if it was a backward state in the north of India, where, you know, the caste uh, thing like, you know, Bihar issues was a different thing. But Karnataka is a literacy rich trait. We are here with, you know, with such high education. And you know, here, if the whole narrative is going to be discussed on caste and communities and all that kind of thing, I think so the voters are not falling into that trap. And that's something that we need to understand. That you know, while uh, the local legal leaders may fi uh, fight it out between the Congress and the BJP, the voters certainly know that they need to choose between development and what is ahead of the state or the kind of guarantees that are being offered. So I don't think so, apart from being a political spat, this is going to become a real poll issue as far as the people of the state are concerned. We are just discussing about the Vokaliga votes in Karnataka and how political parties are trying to woo the Vokaliga votes, meet this year, but also this politics speaking with the Deputy Chief Minister questioning the BJP delegation or the NDA delegation meeting the Vokaligas here and saying what have they done really for the community and the people of the community will teach them a befitting lesson. Bhavya, you wanted to come in and counter some of the points that were made by Prashant earlier. Why did Mr. Kumar Swami have to step down from Chief Ministership? Isn't it because BJP poached 17 MLAs from the coalition government, which included both Congress and JDS MLAs? And what does it even make sense that for you to say Congress was the reason that he had to step down? We were in coalition with him. You poached 17 MLAs. They defected and joined BJP, and there was by election for all the 17 assemblies. BJP is the party which actually has. Um, you know, betrayed Okaliga CMs and also Lingayat CMs. Let me bring Yadurapa sir here. When he had to step down, people saw his tears. In fact, the people, the Lingayats also, you know, taught BJP a lesson in the previous assembly because how they played with the feelings of these Lingayats and Okaligas. And coming to Congress, we are a progressive party. Whether it is Kempe Gauda Jayanti, whether it is Basavanna Jayanti, whether it is Ambedkar Jayanti, whether it is Kanaka Jayanti, representing each and every community, we have always respected the communities and their feelings. And that is why every community, if today, whether it is any religion or community, every representative are there in Congress. Can BJP say the same thing, that they have representatives from every religion and every community? No, they cannot. 
that's because they know okay many, but bhavya interesting here yeah, but uh, but but mr h t kumar swami even during the time of the coalition uh, you know uh, there there were many times that he wept he shed tears and said that he's struggling to you know keep this coalition going so there were problems that he faced from the congress and this is something that he's made amply clear so you know, doesn't this you know, equation apply to the congress party as well you know when there is a coalition there are problems that doesn't mean uh, bjp will come in between and poach 17 mlas they should have just been an opposition no, i'm not talking about there. the poaching aspect here. Yes, i'm talking about mr kumar swami's yeah. reaction today and him blaming the congress party for not able to run the coalition you know mr Com kumar swami blames bjp when he is in coalition with us and when he is in coalition with bjp he blames congress so i, I don't know what to take uh, what he to take out of this so yeah when he was in coalition with us he always he was one of the most strongest voice against mr modi in fact uh deva gowda sir did not want to you know be in india as modi becomes the prime minister they blame bjp when they were with us now they are blaming congress when they are with bjp that's because they keep changing their alliance partner they keep changing their ideology that has nothing to do with the okkali gas if that was the case this time during the elections um if that was the case okkali gas would have voted for mr kumar swami but no they only got 16 seats majority of the okkali gas voted for congress party because they know they know the truth they know what happened how bjp treated okkali gas how jds has betrayed okkali gas and they know that it's only congress which stands with every community out there and in a progressive way who thinks about the farmers because okkali gas okay. a majority like i said they the majority are farming community but 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 bhavya can and any government so now can the congress government say well we are only oh, going to do this for the okkali gas any scheme is particularly for the okkali gas or for the lingayats or for you know the backward community you know whenever the government operates it is for the public in general and it is not a caste wise break up So yeah. you know you're you're talking about of course That representation exactly. representation of course can be spoken about about how much representation the community has been given and today the deputy chief minister said well we've given about eight people from the community Please. tickets as well yeah. he yeah. says that as far as the ministry is concerned it's well represented so this aspect can be spoken about but can you really delve into uh, you know what has been done in terms of governmental work for a particular community you know when it comes to, like i said when we make a policy it's inclusive of every community one and farming community uh, farmers have always been our uh, you know primary priority have always been our priority for our government whether it will, it is at the central or the state government so okaliga when we make any policy for farmers okaliga uh, remain one of the top most you know beneficiaries in numbers Although we don't make it okay. caste wise, okay. Okay. Okkali gas are largely an agrarian, agrarian community, okay. and the exactly. Congress is for the agrarian community. Is the charge okay? Okay. I'll have Prashant respond to that particular one. I'll come back to you. Yes, Prashant. Deepak, see, firstly, Okkali gas fine. We agree that agrarian community, but the DCM who is Okkali gas is probably one of the richest MLAs in the country with thousand four hundred crores of declared asset and. we know the state of poor okkali gas in his own district so we know what he has done for okkali gas he has done nothing and moreover congress trying to say that secular no the congress manifesto released by rahul gandhi and mallikarjun kharge is probably the photocopy of what you would have had if you had a muslim league uh, manifesto so therefore they are not for all communities they are for one particular community and they are willing to do appeasement politics at the sake of everybody for them nation nation also doesn't come first whereas minority appeasement comes first for the congress and next is parivar war we are seeing what's happening here so therefore and regarding the caste census dk shivkumar himself has caste aspirations on sidramaiah saying he doesn't want to accept the caste census which means he knows what sidramaiah is up to sidramaiah wants to undermine the influence of okaligas and lingas therefore dk shivkumar knows that sidrama is going to play that card which is why shivkumar is issuing this wind threat deepak you have to understand this from this point of view it is not what congress is trying to portray saying they have been a champion of okaliga nothing congress has not done specifically 
some anything for the Vokaligas, whereas even the Statue of Prosperity, it was BJP which brought in repute to Kempegoda also. So therefore, Congress stands in only lip service for all communities, whereas for minority appeasement, Congress is first in the line. But whereas BJP, we stand for everybody. Sabka saath, sabka vikas, sabka vishwas, sabka prayas. Okay. And all our central schemes, right from Pradhan Mantri Awaz Yojana, Jal Jeevan Mission, to Kisan Samman Yojana, to Jan, the Jan Ocean Kendra which have been opened, every scheme does not differentiate between religion. It is given to everybody. All the poor are entitled to get it. Whereas Congress manifesto is very clear, it is aimed only at appeasement politics, which must not be the case. Congress is talking itself as a national party. They will not even be principal opposition party in the Lok Sabha, even now. It will be a miracle if Congress crosses 40. We are talking 400 seats. Congress ambition is to get more than 40. So therefore, you see the divide between the ambitions of Congress and BJP. And people have decided that Congress is fit to get less than 40 seats. The frustration of Congress and its leaders is now evident. And they're also clear that they may lose the government here because D.K. Shikumar himself will bring the government down because he knows that Sidramaya would not uh, let him function peacefully, which is why to cover up these things, they're trying to pin some blame on BJP saying, we are meeting the seers and so on and so forth. BJP has always met seers of all communities and all religions. And this was one charge that Congress was always playing against BJP saying, look, you are meeting the seers of all communities. Now, they're saying okay. that we have met the seer first, you are meeting second. What sort of blame game is this, Deepak? There must be some serious uh, issue to be debated and okay. not how Congress is betrayed. Okay. Congress is betrayed okay. people we've, for we've, years from, and people we've heard, we've heard, a, we've heard quite... Quite strong political perspectives on the same. Let me let me bring in also Mr. Grower. Mr. Grower, as far as meeting us here, competition regarding this, saying how many tickets did we give uh, to one particular community, do you feel that all of this really is even relevant in today's political scenario? I don't think so. You know, this is uh, relevant to the kind of, you know, things that are being said. But one of the things, we, you know, if you were to look at the arithmetic of the votes, I would say that, you know, while the Congress has to its kitty and the BJP is upset that, you know, the minority votes are consolidated with the Congress. Similarly, we've seen that after Yadirapa has been given prominence back in the BJP, uh, the Lingayat votes have once again, you know, consolidated with the BJP. Now, Vokaligas, which are about 16 to 17 percent of the vote uh, in Karnataka, is where we are now seeing this fight for. Fight for simple reason, because we are seeing basically the annihilation of JDS, which was a strong Vokaliga party with, you know, the kind of alliance that H.T. Kumar Swami has done with the BJP. Uh, the Vokaliga voters seem to be confused as to whether they should stand with the BJP, which they have opposed in the past, or should the voter move to, you know, a strong leader like D.K. Kumar. So clearly, if you were to look at the arithmetics of this uh, Vokaliga fight that we are seeing, the Vokaliga voters fight, Clearly, this is what both the parties want to consolidate on, that whoever gets a bigger chunk of, you know, the Vokaliga vote certainly will have an edge in the southern Karnataka region. And that's where we're seeing this war of words and, you know, the kind of statements that are coming out, because that could be the shifting vote, which could make a big game change as far as at least seven to eight constituencies are concerned. So clearly, while, you know, uh, the statements that come out that we are, more concerned, we are more uh, worried about the Vokalika voters. The fact is, everybody is looking at the Vokalika votes, and that's something which could be the only shifting vote bank which could decide this game, because Siddharamaya with his OBC vote bank certainly is working his way hard over there, and this yeah. could be the crucial game that we could see happening on the 26th of April, where which way the Vokalika voter will go, will he ditch Kumar Swami for the BJP or the Congress that is something yeah. which is very crucial. I think that's an important point that you make, Mr. Grower, that, you know, while the race to meet Sears will continue, uh, this sort of a shift of voters from particular communities through leaders like Mr. Kumar Swami, whether that will actually happen is the question or will they follow the traditional route. I'm thanking all our panelists for joining us on this broadcast.